In this video, I'm gonna be talking about the cost of living in Seattle, Washington, and breaking it all the way down. I'm talking food, housing, utilities, taxes. Stay tuned, let's get right into it. Artists of West Seattleites. What up, family? This is Francisco Dictado with GPS Realty and the Living in Seattle Real Estate Group. If this is your first time tuning in to this channel and you want to know all there is to know about living, eating, working, and playing in Seattle, Washington, then tap that subscribe button and get notified whenever we, we release new video and content. And honestly, we get phone calls, texts, DMs, emails every day about what it's like to eat, live, work, play in Seattle, Washington. So if you wanna know more, stay tuned, because we've got your back. All right, so let's get into it. I wanna give you guys a little bit of historical background and reference as to how and when Seattle, in 1851, the Denny Party landed on Alkive Beach and that's typically where people want to mark the creation of Seattle, Washington. They landed there, set up shop, and then about six months later realized moving across the water to what is now known as Pioneer Square and the Seattle waterfront was probably a better place for commerce and trade. So uh, we went from Alki Beach being the birthplace of Seattle, Washington, to about 1851, 1852, having Pioneer Square and the Seattle waterfront kind of being the, uh, the hub and the, the main thoroughfare for uh, Seattle, Washington. In Seattle, you'll find all types of different homes, mid-century moderns, craftsmen, Northwest contemporaries, split levels, ramblers, ranches, every home that you can think of and all the other ones in between Seattle pretty much has that architecture. Depending on what neighborhood you go into, there's gonna be more of one or less of the other, but typically in Seattle, we've got a pretty nice diverse array of homes. Whichever kind of suits your fancy or whatever piques your interest, there's gonna be a neighborhood and a home. I'm pretty sure that'll, that'll fit with whatever your style and aesthetic really is. So tons of homes to pick from and choose from. The, the question a lot of people moving here always tend to pose is, you know, what neighborhoods are the best and how close are we to the city and all the amenities. And I'll tell you right now, Seattle is not that big of a city. Yeah, we've got traffic issues, but still, you know, on the scale of big cities and how we compare in Seattle, I feel like we're still a small city that has a few growing pains. So one of the cool things about living in Seattle, I feel like is, Wherever you are, whatever neighborhood you're situated in, and I feel like you're never too far from nature. Whether that's going and driving a couple hours out to Mount Rainier, or driving down to your nearest park, which is maybe on the waterfront, Lake Washington or the Puget Sound. Being close to nature is, I believe, one of the perks to living in Seattle, Washington. And one of the reasons why it's so popular and why so many people choose to live and, and call Seattle home. All right, so the next cost I want to talk about is housing. And that's gonna take up probably the most chunk of your budget when you're considering moving or living in Seattle, Washington. So first off, let me give you some perspective. Seattle ranks third behind San Jose and San Francisco for the highest national salary, which is $111,000. So, you know, if you're coming to Seattle from middle America, this is probably gonna be a shock to the system. But if you're already living on the West Coast or the East Coast, Seattle actually might be more affordable for you. And I think with the amenities that we'll talk about and just the things Seattle has to offer naturally, uh, it makes sense why a lot of people from the tech sector are moving or have moved to Seattle, Washington in the past. All right guys, so let's jump in and, and kind of look at what an $850,000 home purchase looks like. And obviously I'm using these numbers here, but if you guys have a different financial situation and have questions, please reach out to me. I'm more than happy to point you in the right direction when it comes to lenders. I've got a great few lenders on my team, so don't hesitate to reach out if you have questions, but let's dig into it a little bit. So $850,000, let's say you have a 
um, down payment saved up. That takes our mortgage down to $765,000. Let's add a 0.94 property tax on that. And also um, let's add 125 bucks for homeowners insurance monthly. Also, let's go ahead and calculate for a 6.6 .6 interest rate because that's kind of what we're looking at right now today in the market. So that gives us a $6,000 monthly mortgage. So that's the breakdown at those numbers. Obviously, if you've got more down payment, this will look completely different to you. And also if you have a different insurance plan and yada, yada, yada. But just in general, let's say your, your housing budget comes to about $6,500. That's probably typical um, and something you should kind of prepare for and be aware of when you're thinking about moving or living in Seattle, Washington. Again, take into consideration, and, and remember, we're looking at things relatively here. If you're coming from middle America, this, this could be a shock to the system, but um, for a lot of people all, already working in tech or moving here to Seattle, Washington, because of tech jobs, I feel like you could actually be saving some money and getting more bang for your buck in Seattle right now. All right, so we just went over what the cost of living looks like in Seattle, Washington. Now, maybe you've got to sell a home to buy a house in Seattle, maybe you don't, but I've got a lender named Brett Burns of Director Mortgage who has a transitional loan program that I think could be interesting to people who want to tap into their home's equity uh, without having to sell it right away and who might be able to utilize this transitional loan program to help make a more competitive offer in what is still a seller's market here in Seattle, Washington, even though we've seen the rates go up and houses stay on the market a little bit longer, there are still neighborhoods with homes that are competitive. Um, I'm not going to say that we're getting, low, or we're getting homes that are getting bid up by hundreds of, hundreds of thousands of dollars anymore, but there are still homes that, if they're, if they're priced correctly, are still very popular and going within the first weekend of the houses being listed. So, Brett Burns, take it away. Thanks, Francisco. So as we all know, as we look to buy a new house, the transition from one house to the next house can oftentimes seem tricky. Do we sell first? Do we buy first? Can we afford to buy first? So we've come up with our transition loan to help our buyers and sellers in this position. So very simply, the transition loan is designed to help you transition from your current home to the new one. So the biggest first pieces are one, it allows you to buy prior to selling to make that more convenient and to make a more aggressive offer in the marketplace. Two, it allows you to use the equity in your current home as the down payment on the new home for you. So that's huge again. I know the biggest source of down payment for most clients is the sale of their current home. So that's the benefit of this. We'll let you use that equity prior to selling. And then three, the qualifying is only on the new home. We know you're gonna sell the current home, so even for a very, very short period, if you own two homes, we're not gonna qualify for two. We're gonna help you qualify just on the new home, so it gives you the same buying power as if you already sold. And then lastly, it really puts you in a great position from convenience to be able to buy that new home, and from a competitive standpoint, to buy the new home non-contingent, as well as have the time to stage and prep your home to sell at the best price possible. So it's an awesome program. We used it for a lot of clients who really helped them through the transition. As always, feel free to reach out to either of us. We're happy to help. Thank you. All right, guys. So let's get into one of the uh, topics that I think gets brought up a lot when you're considering living or moving to Seattle, Washington, and that's taxes. What do taxes look like in Seattle? So first off, there is no state income tax. Uh, so that's very appealing. It is a draw to Seattle. But uh, where they will get you is on consumption, and our retail tax here is about 10.25%. Our property taxes, which uh, comparatively nationwide are not that bad, uh, but you have to do take into consideration the higher value of homes here in Seattle, Washington. Uh, so the ta property taxes here are 0.94%. We also have a very unique sugar tax in Seattle, Washington. And by sugar tax, I mean there's a 0.0175% tax on all sugary drinks sold in Seattle, Washington. And that's exactly what it sounds like. It's a tax on soda pop and any other drink that has uh, sugar in it. It's, I think, pretty unique, but it is a thing. So if you drink a lot of soda pop or whatever in Seattle, it might get a little expensive for you. 
All right, guys, so you bought a house, you know what the taxes are on them. Now you want to figure out what, what it's going to cost to run the house. Um, and by run the house, I mean utilities. You're going to want to heat it. You're going to want to throw away your trash. So what does water, sewer, and garbage look like in Seattle, Washington? So uh, bi-monthly is when we, we pay our bills here when it comes to uh, utilities. And typically, for an average size home, you can factor in almost 250 to 300 bucks a month for utilities in Seattle, Washington. Now, if you have thermostat wars like me and my wife do, she likes the house, if she could, to be probably at 78 degrees to 80. I'm like, no, let's keep it more around 68 to 70 degrees, which is impossible in my house, but I'm always gonna try. I swear, every time I walk by the thermostat, I, I kinda, I hit the down arrow and then maybe 15 minutes later, she'll go walk by and I'll see her hit the up arrow and, and kind of get us to where I feel like it's a little too damn hot in the house. I've told her many times to just buy a few more sweatshirts and actually maybe that's what I'll buy her for Christmas. Anyway, water, sewer, garbage, I would say factor in about 250 to 300 bucks a month. Obviously, if you're more like me, you might be able to save a few bucks monthly if you turn down that heat. But also, there's a lot of homes here that are uh, that use natural gas for, for heating, and that average is about 40 to 60 bucks a month, I would say. In the summertime, a lot of people here don't use or, or need the heat, so I wouldn't say you're using gas to heat the house all year round. You're probably using it half of the year. And uh, so that could also be helpful when we're talking about factoring utilities and, and the cost of that. But if you're definitely um, playing thermostat wars with your significant other, uh, who knows, you know, this, this could get up to 500 bucks. And I know when my mother-in-law comes to visit, I love her to death, but she loves to do laundry. And so our water bill for that, for that couple of weeks or whatever it is out of the year is considerably higher. And when I go back and look at the bills at the end of the year, I know when my mom has, my mother-in-law has visited because our water bill has shot up a little bit. So water, sewer, garbage, 250 to 300 bucks a month. Uh, if you have natural gas also as a heating source, I'd say uh, 60 bucks or so uh, to heat the house uh, during the fall and winter seasons and maybe some of the spring. All right, so the next thing I wanna go over is food. If, and if you're anything like me, you love it. I'm a big foodie and I love, tasting all of the things that CL has to offer. I feel like the food scene here is fantastic and is one of the best in all of the nation. So, you know, the seafood here goes crazy, the, the sushi, but we've got Pike Place Market around here as well. And that place, I kid you not, I feel like every restaurant that's near that area just has some fantastic food. And it, does, it just does not disappoint. I'm talking about the Chinese food, Filipino food, Thai food, everything, the clam chowder, all of that stuff is, is A1 from Seattle. So food here uh, is about 30% more expensive than the national average. And let's just say you're going out with say two people, uh, you have maybe an appetizer, your main course, uh, that's probably gonna run you about 80 bucks. Obviously if you're drinking, which uh, there's a ton of great pubs and, and brew houses over here in Seattle, Washington, that's gonna run you a little bit higher. And if you're you're like us, a family of four, you can expect this bill to get up over the $100 range pretty quickly and easily. Um, we don't drink too much, but again, I'm a foodie, so I like to eat my calories and I like to have dessert. Um, the kids right now, you know, they can order from a kid's menu and so that saves you a little, uh, a little bit on the tab. But I'd say if it's two people, you're probably looking, around, looking at around 80 bucks for a, for a mid-tier sort of restaurant uh, in Seattle, Washington. If you're going out as a family of three or four, easily you're gonna be looking at over a $100 bill uh, when you get out of there. And obviously, you know, if you're in an area where you've got some really gourmet chefs and just great uh, produce and products to, to choose from, you're probably gonna get a bill of over a hundred bucks um, depending on the type of restaurant you're at. But 80 bucks is probably the average there. And if you're dining out with, you know, two or more people, um, expect that bill to go up over a hundred bucks. All right guys, so before I wrap this up, I wanna go over a few other costs that might be relevant to you when you're thinking about living in Seattle, Washington. Right now, a gallon of gas is averaging about $4.80. The average cost of a burger is about $6.15 in Seattle, Washington. 
and I can definitely give you a suggestion as to the best burger in Seattle. It's called Dick's. When we're talking about childcare in Seattle, Washington, uh, that's about 1500 bucks a month. And if your kid is going half the day, it's about 1200 uh, What else do we have here? A gym membership, which I personally, it's something that I just have to have. It helps me with balance and, and just sort of my mental state. It's about 60 bucks a month. And obviously, if you guys have any other questions or things that uh, uh, might come up when you're doing your planning for moving to Seattle, Washington, please don't feel like you can't reach out to us. We're here all day, all night, ready to field your questions. And like I said in the beginning, if this is your first time to this channel, please hit the subscribe button so you're notified whenever we make these videos. And we're here for you. So if you've got any questions about what it's like to eat, live, work, play here in Seattle, Washington, we've got your back and we'd love to hear from you. Sometimes you wanna go.